chairman has subscribed committee on Nigeria Ghana Friendship Group. Honorable Peter Abiola Makide has expressed readiness to settle trade disputes and other form of hostility between Nigeria and Ghana. The chairman made this commitment during an interactive meeting with government ministry department and agencies as well as ECOWAS, Economic of West African State respectively. Um, GUTA, which is Ghanaian Union of Traders Association, started to um, lock up shops, um, especially the ones that has to do with Nigerians in Ghana. And they started to lock up these shops and uh, there was so much in the news and as we speak, it has not been resolved. I expect that uh, Nigeria uh, Ministry of uh, Federal Ministry of Investment, I expect them to be here. If they are not going to be here, then we will have to write a very strong uh, um, worded letter to them. Because this is paramount to every one of us as far as Ghana and Nigeria is concerned. So they locked up these shops. And then the authority, the Ghanaian authority, also now joined in the process to say that, okay, well, we are the one who actually locked your shops. But due to the, um, the pull-down of the building that was at the residence of our, our high commissioner in Ghana, uh, the Nigerian traders took that opportunity to now protest. Um, that, look, we will protest alongside other people and especially whatever it is that we are going through. So after that protest, um, Ghana Authority now came forward with what we call an assessment. Uh, they came forward with what we call an assessment, assessing all traders that were in Ghana, especially the Nigerian traders. And during that assessment, they were asking Nigerian traders the following. Um, they are CAC certificate, record of remittance of taxes, one, the BAYE, which is their personal income tax. They were asking them also the business income tax and then their VAT certificate and everything that has to do with their taxes. But one more thing that they added to it was the registration. Uh, the Ghanaian Investment Promotion Center Certificate, GIPC. And that GIPC requested or required that each trader should have cash or equity of at least a million dollars in cash or in equity. And that GIPC is a law that um, the Ghanaian authorities are now enforcing on, our, on Nigerians. Uh, and according to them, it's part of their act, Act uh, 865, I think, that that was, I think, enacted in 2013, thereabout, targeting foreigners. And then they included Nigeria as part of those um, foreigners. Uh, I'm just trying to at least just recap on the reason why uh, we were called. Uh, Nigerians now believe that this GIPC should be harmonized with the ECOWAS protocol, that why should we have to pay this $1 million when we have uh, ECOWAS protocol in place? And that's the reason why we invited the ECOWAS as well. Uh, why do we have to pay? ECOWAS should be able to um, harmonize these countries in the sub-region. And again, Nigerians believe that this GIPC which request require this one million uh, dollars is meant for foreigners, and they are ECOWAS citizens. 
and that they are not meant to pay that that amount. So I would um, invite our guests to speak on this matter as far as what they know. But while we requested some document from the customs, the speaker of the Parliament of Ghana visited Nigeria. And there was a kind of a joint statement that was done before the visit. And they specifically made mention of a few things. In the process of trying to resolve this matter, the speaker said that Nigerians should please consider their goods that are on prohibition list. That, okay, now you talk about GIPC, but what about our goods that are on the prohibition list? Hats are the representative. We have, honored members, we have um, a letter from the, um, the Controller General of Customs uh, giving permission to. the controller in charge of trade, facilitation, preferential trade, to stand in for him. Am I right, sir? I think this is the, um, so, Clark, you can, um, and also we have a letter from the um, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, um, and they also, um, sent us a list of, uh, I think it's import prohibition list. That's from the um, Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Let me start with customs. Um, members would like to ask um, what they are aware of. Our goal, as far as this committee is concerned, is to resolve. The speaker, our speaker, Femi Bajabi Amila, had visited Ghana, and they too already came, and they are expecting us to um, come up with a way to resolve this matter. Our people are suffering over there, they are crying, they want this thing to be resolved. And I know that all of us are aware. Customs, are you aware of this dispute? Is there anything that you want this committee to know as far as um, your enforcement is concerned? Thank you. Um, um, what, what do you know as far as this dispute is concerned? Thank you. Nigeria and Ghana, we are all in the same uh, regional integration of ECOA states, and uh, we have continued to trade on preferential trade that is given to us under the auspices of ECOA Trade Liberation Scheme, that is ETLS. The trade between Nigeria and Ghana has been going on. Um, um, we do not have any problem with that. The problems we have are normal problems that come in preferential trades, um, whereby we also resolve them diplomatically through the ECOWAS, and uh, we don't have any standing problem uh, to do with exports and imports between Ghana and Nigeria. I just, if, they, if there's any delay, last time we went for a meeting in Lome, that has to do with delays of um, Ghana goods at Cotonou, but that is not a problem between Nigeria and Ghana. From the speaker in Ghana, he's, he gave uh, a speech prohibited from entering Nigeria. This is what he said, sir. He said, um, it is said that it must be peace without victory, only peace between between equals can last. To this end, it will be highly appreciated if the government of Nigeria will review the provision list banning the importation of specific goods and commodities into the Nigerian market from countries including Ghana. This request is underscored by the resolution as captured in the communique of 31st of May 2021 referred to, uh, to Supra. I have no doubt, right, Honorable Speaker, under your leadership of the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
an institution of measureless might and majesty, Nigeria can find to the provision list to align with the contemporary international uh, trade practices. So he's referring to something. Do you have an idea, sir? It's for the third country. Uh, sometimes, uh, when you the third country, that's a country that's outside the course, bringing goods through Ghana, Nigerian customs will stop them. And then um, will not allow the source goods to enter using Ghana as a conduit to come into Nigeria. Mm. It's uh, to be noted here that Ghana has a preferential uh, uh, trade agreement with EU, even as we in ECOWAS have a preferential tariff amongst the states. Um, um, allowing all groups from Ghana to come into Nigeria will, will, without checks, without a matter of allowing goods from EU to come in again through the same preferential trade agreement. We, through the ECOWAS, have, have tried as much as possible to point this out. When countries of regional integration, especially in the customs union, in the level of ETLS of, of the courts, have a preferential trade agreement, other members of that community will not have preferential trade agreements with other countries without resorting to that uh, uh, regional integration body. So Ghana on itself cannot have a PTA with you without bringing in the courts. So on that, we will find goods that are EU origin trying to come into Nigeria through Ghana, Nigeria customs in most cases, okay. and make sure mm. that they meet the criteria of the rules of origin before. Okay. How do we how do you determine sir, the origin? I mean, how do you is it written in the on the box, or is it how do you know that this particular good is from EU and it's passing through Ghana? What are they? Uh, because if they from EU and the one that is not from EU, Meaning that it is still um, a special thing. Mm. When some goods within enter Ghana, they have to pay duty as if they are entering on the raw on the material. Mm -hmm. So, where those kind of goods, we have we have to fuse on the Ghana, on the Ghana they are production okay. area. So, when we find that some goods are coming in, okay. we expect that it has not qualified to be to enter into the courts. And we normally ask that they could give us proof that which has been paid to Ghana before it can qualify to enter the PTA. Okay. Any so members? Yeah. Ghana's PTA with EU. And Ghana is not supposed to do that without carrying the ECOWAS along. That is the member states. Have you people raised this at the level of ECOWAS? And if you have raised it, are there certain correspondence that this committee will need to have? as evidence that you have raised this at the level of ECOWAS so that we can take it up with ECOWAS to know how far they have gone on it. Question, how do we know goods that are originated from Ghana or any other ECOWAS country? I dare say before we come together as member states of ECOWAS, there are rules that have been put in place to recognize and identify what goods are of Ghanaian origin, Nigerian origin, Togo, or any other member state. The agreement according to the ECOWAS ETLs are good origin. This means that goods that have been harvested in a country, like crops, animals that have been grown, I mean that have been born and bred inside the country, minerals that have been mined or dug from that country, uh, fishes that have been harvested from the rivers or lakes of that country and similar things like handcrafts, works of art and the rest that are 100% produced 
meaning wholly produced goods. The second criteria that you can use to understand whether goods are of Ghanaian origin or not is whether they have satisfied the rule of the substantial transformation according to the ECOWAS protocols. That transmission, transformation means that goods that may come from a third member country like Europe or China must have undergone certain transformation or value addition to warrant them being called a country's origin. Take for example, if you bring in, you want to manufacture a car, and you say you bring in tires, you bring in the body, you bring in um, maybe the seats, there is a certain component that states that other components must be produced locally, which is up to 60% of the production in terms of the value. And this criteria, after the production of that material, will now enable that product to be termed as that of, like for example, Ghanaian origin. The third item is change in tariff heading. If you bring an iron today, or any metal or whatever, you mold it, you work on it, you transform it, and the tariff heading will change from something else to another name. That will enable the product to now be called an originating product from that member country. So if there is anything from Ghana which has satisfied these three rules, there is no reason why Nigeria should not allow it to come under the ETLS scheme that is being run by ECOWAS member country. Suffice to say that if there is any uh, area, gray area that we may have, it will be better if we have specific examples of certain products that Nigeria might not have agreed to it being of Ghanaian, Ghanaian origin. In that case, we can go to the nitty gritty to find out why do we think that it does not satisfy these three rules. So my suggestion is if the Ghanaian side can provide such examples, then we can be able to go deep down and find why it is we think they do not belong to Ghana origin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> my name is Henry Wauga, and I represent the people of Itobike uh, from Imo State. Um, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I want to thank you for laying a very good uh, foundation, the background information, so that our guests will know where we're coming from. Just to re-echo what the Chairman had said, uh, there has been a, a very high level of legislative diplomacy trying to unravel the knot between Nigeria and Ghana along the issues of trade and other relationships. Um, the Nigerian Customs Service, I think you, the last comment that you made just nailed it on the head. We are not interested in all those goods that are coming through and all of that. What we're trying to, is an interactive session and you're giving us critical information, is the Speaker of Ghana was very clear when he said there are some products from Ghana. So those are the ones that we're interested in. Now what you have said now is that perhaps we need to get them to give us a list so that we're not going round and round. We can come back to you with a specific list that look at what is coming from the parliament or the speaker of Ghana, because I'm, I suspect that there are some goods in this problem that we went into with Ghana when they demolished the Nigeria house, when they gave the embargo on, um, there's been strain. There's been a strain of relationship and we're trying to use the legislature now to repair that relationship. So we'll be, obviously we'll just have to go back and get, use all the interaction that we can, get the list, and come back to you, and then hopefully we'll be able to resolve it. What we want is actually to get some kind of resolution, because I remember the Speaker of Ghana, their mindset was to give Nigeria everything that we were requesting. Oh, we demolish the house, we'll pay for it. Oh, we'll review it. But on the other hand, help us tell Nigerian government to remove this, uh, they had a problem with the closure of the border too, I think. Mm -hmm. Apart yeah. from that and, and all of that, so we'll get back to you on that. Thank you very much. Out in the interest of our people.
uh, trading in Ghana, uh, what would you... Have you ever been called to such a meeting like this, as far as resolving issues with Ghana? Like... Minister of Foreign Affairs, to look into the relationship between Nigeria and uh, Ghana, it was called Senior Officers Meeting. And that meeting, I was opportune to be part of it. And all issues were brought forth, what they felt we should do and what they felt we shouldn't do. Because to be candid, within ECOWAS countries, we discovered that only Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Gambia share the common heritage of being English-speaking. All the French-speaking countries are on one side, so to say, because they belong to a sub-group called UN More. That means before you come to ECOWAS meeting, UN More must have sat down late and taken their decision. And it realized with it down on us that unless we sit down between us and Ghana, together with Gambia, Sierra Leone, and other English speaking countries, we may not be able to reap the full benefit of their cause, especially Nigeria being the uh, breadwinner, the highest uh, uh, contributing country in the world of their cause. So at that meeting, I believe. Not such big matters were brought forth, and we tried to be our brothers keepers. We interacted freely, and it was a very friendly outcome, of which we agreed that uh, whatever the case between us and Ghana must be resolved amicably, and we will not have any rancor or disagreement within us. So this committee is exactly doing the same work that the other diplomatic channel is trying to do, which is on the right path and is a commendable effort by the House to have set up this committee in the interest of both the countries and probably I would say even beyond. So I believe that uh, uh, there is not much problem that Ghana will be able to bring apart from the border closure. So goods from the free trade zones in Ghana cannot come to Nigeria under ETLS. They must come as a third member of third party countries. Sorry, sir. Quick question. Are they are they to ensure that we on our side are transparent enough to say, hey, Ghana, look, this is A, B, C, D. And please make sure that the goods coming from you are A, B, C, D goods. Don't now add E. And they are not aware of the E. Do we have that kind of situation? We have, sir. The issue of the traders we brought forth. For just no reason that you and I may not understand. Suddenly we woke up and our traders in Ghana are being treated differently, even differently from members of other students of other countries. Probably it might have something to do with the psyche of the Ghana must go thing. Yes. Of a thing. So I don't know from where these things are coming from, but if they are coming from somewhere, let us know from where exactly. Let us have the specific examples. There's uh, like uh, if, if you. Uh, of the, of the Parliament of Ghana said he was very specific on that prohibition list. Yes, he was. Uh, he was specific on that. And. That's why I I am not happy with the fact that trade and investment they are not here. Because there was this joint statement by both Nigeria and Ghana. It's a joint statement. And under that uh, uh, there is one number five of that joint statement issued uh, July eight twenty no no not July eight. Can even I think it was in 20, let me see the date. Okay, Ghana, that was 31st of May, 2021. And the Speaker the, of the Parliament of Ghana referred to this joint statement. And number five of that statement says the prohibition list issued by the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria prohibiting the importation of specific goods 
and commodities into the Nigerian market shall be reviewed with a view to granting exemption to Ghanaian exporters. That was the first, um, first draft. Then they came up with another draft, which is uh, a reviewed copy of that one. And that same number five, they changed it to, that was a joint statement that the provision list issued by the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria prohibiting the importation of specific goods and commodities into the Nigerian market shall be reviewed with the view to aligning it with contemporary international trade practices. That by removing exempt Ghana, you know, from the list. So I want to be sure going forward that in order to resolve this matter, the customs with whoever should be our counterpart over there should be able to say, look, let us understand ourselves as far as this prohibition is concerned. We are not uh, which haunting you people. This is what we have as our law that we need to prohibit. So, and so that there will be harmonization as far as um, uh, that is concerned. But we'll come back to you, Custom. Thank you very much. Export and... Yes, it is not our core It's a I know, I know. And that instrument can be only, you know, are you restricted any goods to Ghana? Is there any restriction to your you are, you are, you are export as, promotion? As as, uh, Can we just export anything to Ghana and they will take it? There is no issue. No, as as About legal goods. Legal goods. Okay. Uh, but did you hear what Custom said? No, we have products, you Okay. As far as other exportable products. Okay. Have you been rejected? Have you been banned from bringing any goods? No, not at all. Not banned from bringing any goods. That this committee, our goal is just to resolve this matter. Yes. It has been lingering for a very long time, and I don't want us to take it for granted. Small businesses are suffering. They are the ones that are actually generating jobs more than even the, the, the big corporations. For example, these micro entrepreneurs in Nigeria now, they contribute about 48% of the national GDP. In US, it's 44%. They drive the economy. And now, many of them are now doing businesses in Ghana. And that, that, that is part of our economy. They're going there to do business, but they have been stopped from doing that business. We all should be concerned. Central Bank is releasing money to SMEs. Are they not part of those SMEs? They are. Small and medium enterprise. And they collect this money from Central Bank, but they can't do business in Ghana. So we should be concerned to please, let's find a way to ensure that this matter um, is um, resolved. Uh, well, my name is Honorable Abiola uh, Peter Makinde, a member representing Ondo East West uh, Federal Constituency in Ondo State. Um, sometimes in July uh, 2021, uh, Right Honorable Speaker Femi Badiabi Amila um, announced and inaugurated a committee. Uh, called uh, Nigeria Ghana a Friendship Group, and we've been saddled with that uh, responsibility of ensuring that um, the diplomatic relationship between Nigeria and Ghana it's um, well done. And of course, any other assignment that has been given to us by um, the Parliament, the Nigerian Parliament, and today we uh, gathered uh, with Nigerian Customs, Nigerian. Export uh, Promotion Council uh, to resolve the issue that has been lingering for a very long time and that issue uh, has to do with our uh, Nigerian traders in Ghana. Um, they have been going through a lot 
and the uh, speaker, right honorable speaker, Fenu Bajabi Amina has not been happy with it. I want this matter to be resolved. And we call on a few agencies to come and present and tell us what they know about it. And our intention is also to go to Ghana as well, uh, meet with the parliament there, uh, also to meet with our Nigerian traders uh, in Ghana. Uh, of course, highlight of today's meeting, uh, uh, one of them has to do with this uh, GIPC, a Ghana Investment Promotion Center Act, uh, 865, I guess, that has to do with $1 million uh, cash or equity that has to be provided by uh, Nigerian traders. And, of course, there's this argument that we are ECOWAS citizens and we have free, free movement and the right to also establish uh, businesses across the ECOWAS sub-region countries. So, <clears throat> the, the speaker of the um, parliament of Ghana uh, came uh, sometimes in July and made mention of the fact that Nigeria should please review their provision list of goods that are coming in from Ghana because they found out that some goods are not coming in. Some goods, not all goods, some goods are not coming in. And part of what the speaker said, uh, Right Honorable Speaker uh, Sumana Bagbe uh, made mention of the fact that we need to uh, Nigeria, Nigeria need to look at that prohibition list and ensure that um, it's being reviewed. And that prompted some of uh, the reasons why we have to call a meeting to ask customs to discuss how far this, um, uh, this matter um, has gone and how are they resolving the matter. Of course, customs came and you know analyzed, which we have we must have seen uh, <clears throat> today. But we are taking on one fact that in between Nigeria and Ghana, there is what we call focal point. Uh, customs believe that there should be uh, that they will talk to their own focal point in Ghana and discuss about these goods that are being prohibited in Nigeria. But as far as they are concerned, they felt that everything is going on smoothly unless the focal point in Ghana notifies them of any goods that are on the prohibition list that is affecting Ghana. David Eko, the adjective in